In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you some very basic movements using the Lego Spike Prime Robotics Kits. What I'm going to be doing in this video today is showing you how to move your robot forward and backward. So very simple movements to begin with. Now before we start today's tutorial, there are a couple of things you are going to need. First, you're going to need this app that you can see on the screen right now. This is just the Lego Education Spike app. You can get it for free from the Lego Education website. I'll post this um, link in the video description below, but basically you just pop over to this website, choose which platform that you are working on, and click get the app, and you're able to download it for free, and then install it onto your device. The other thing you're going to need today is a pre-built robot. So you can build whatever kind of robot you would like, just make sure it's got some wheels and it is ready to start moving. Alrighty, so to get started on this project today, make sure you're in the Spike Prime option here. Some people do get confused and choose the Spike Essentials option. We don't want that. We need to make sure we've got the Spike Prime option selected and we've got this bluey colored background. Uh, once you're on this splash screen here, you need to click on the plus sign towards the center of the page that says New Project. Now a little box will pop up and in that box you need to give your project a name. So I'm just going to call this one forward and back because we're going to be learning how to move our robot forward and then also making it reverse. And you need to choose how you're going to code today. Are you going to be using icon blocks? If you've used EV3 robots in the past, then you would be used to icon blocks. Um, we're going to be using word blocks today. That resembles the Scratch interface. So if you've ever coded a game with Scratch before, word blocks are very similar to that. If you're feeling a little bit more technical though, and you're quite advanced with your coding, you might like to do text-based coding using Python. Okay, but we're going to go with the middle option today, the word blocks. So click on that, and then click on the Create button. Alright, so you're greeted with a screen that looks like this once you click Create. If you've used Scratch before, you should recognize this kind of look. Down the left-hand side here, you've got all your different code blocks. And right on the left-hand side here, you can see all the code blocks are grouped into categories. So it does make finding the block of code you're after quite simple. All these blocks of code can be dragged out into this area over here, the workspace, and you can snap these blocks together to create little programs. You can also pull them apart, and if you want to delete them, you just drag them back towards the left-hand side of the page, and they will delete. Okay, so what I want you to do is make sure you've got this yellow block still in your program here. Um, it's just called when program starts. This block of code will always be at the beginning of your programs and it basically says when we press this yellow play button down in the right hand corner, what do we want our robot to do? Okay, so we need to drag in blocks of code just to tell our robot what to do. Okay, so before we do start coding today, I need, to, I need you to make sure that your robot is connected to the computer. So there's two ways to do that. You can either do it via a white USB cable that gets supplied with your kits, or you can connect wirelessly using Bluetooth. I have connected wirelessly using Bluetooth, and I can tell that it's connected because I can see all my connections up the top here. So as you can see, we've got the letters A, B, C, D, and F. They are the ports on my hub that currently have um, some sensors and some motors plugged into them. So you can see A and B ports have my two motors plugged in, so they're the wheels of my robot. I've also got my eyes, which is the distance sensor, plugged into port C. I've got the color sensor, plugged into port D, and the force sensor into port F. You can also click on this little picture here to give you a better look at that. All right, you can always disconnect if you wanted to as well, but we obviously don't want that right now. What we do want to do is start coding. So the first thing that we're going to be doing in our code today is telling the computer which ports our motors are hooked up to. Okay, so as you can see here, we've got our ports in A and B. Oh, sorry, our motors plugged into the ports A and B. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the pink movement section here. And I'm looking for the block of code that says set movement motors to A plus B. Just drag that out and connect it to your yellow block here. Okay, and that tells the computer now that my motors are plugged into ports A and B. Now I know already from testing a little bit earlier, I need to switch these motors around. Otherwise, when I try to drive forward, the computer is going to make it go in reverse. So what I need it to do, I'm just going to click on the letter A here. 
is to switch them around. So now it says set movement motors to B plus A. All right. Now, depending on what port your motors are plugged into, these are going to change. OK, you could be on port C and D or you might be on E and B. It could be any any kind of combination. It just depends what your motors are plugged into. So have a look now. Find what your two wheels are plugged into and make sure you set your movement motors to those ports. That way the computer knows uh, which ports it needs to power up and start moving. Now the next thing I like to do when I'm moving my robot is set the movement speed. So still in this pink section here, the movement section, there's a block of code called set movement speed. Just drag that out. Now I'm going to leave my movement speed at 50%. Okay, so that's about half its maximum speed. If you want to put it at 100% to make it go faster, by all means go for it. But because we're first timers here with these robots, we don't want to go too quick. So we'll just leave it at 50%, which is relatively slow. Now the next block of code is just going to get our robot moving. And we're going to stick with the movement um, tab again here. We're going to bring out this one here. It currently says move right 30 for 10 centimeters. Okay, and what we're going to be doing here is moving it. And we don't want it to go right. We want it to go straight. So if you click on that right 30, you've actually got this little arrow here. And you can choose what way the robot is steering. So we just want it to go straight. So if you make it go straight up, it's going to be turning zero degrees. That just means it's going to drive straight ahead. If you wanted to do a gentle turn, you just turn that wheel to the left or to the right. Just a small number of degrees, say 20 degrees. If you wanted to do a sharp turn though, okay, you'd bring that arrow right around and be turning like right 100 or maybe left 100 degrees. Oh, sorry, minus 100 degrees. All right, so... That is one way you can turn your robot. But as I said, we're not going to be doing that just yet. I'll focus on that in a different tutorial. What I'm looking at now is just driving straight. Okay. And the next thing we're going to be looking at is how far we're going to be driving. So the easiest way for me is to use centimeters. So I want to drive 50 centimeters. Okay. You don't have to stick with 50 centimeters though. There are other options here. And I want you to test these out today just to get a feel for what all the different options do to your robot when you um, uh, move them in inches, in rotations, degrees, and seconds. They're all pretty self-explanatory. Uh, rotations basically means how many rotations of the wheel do you want it to do? So if I was to say five rotations, the wheels on the robot would rotate a full 360 degrees five times. Um, you can tell it how many degrees you want it to turn. You can tell it to turn for this many seconds, so it would drive straight for five seconds. Okay, there's lots of different ways you can drive straight, but I'm going to go with centimeters for now and leave it at 50 centimeters. And that's basically it. So when the program starts, set your movement motors to whatever you've got your uh, motors plugged into. Make sure you set your speed, so 50% is a good starting speed, and then move straight for 50 centimeters, so we're not going too far. When you're ready, put your robot on the ground, make sure there's no obstacles in the way, and press the play button. We'll see what happens. All right, so that was pretty good. So the robot drove 50 centimeters. When you're finished, you can press the stop button to stop your program from running. And you now know how to drive straight. As I said before, try out some of these other options if you would like to see what sort of effect it has on your robot as it drives forward and see which um, method you would like to use when moving your robot. But I find centimeters fairly easy to use. Now, one more thing I might show you here is how you can get your robot to move backwards. And I'm going to show you another way to do it because if we were to drag out that same block we just used and try to tell it to move backwards, it doesn't quite go right round, or it doesn't turn all the way around to go backwards. So we can't use that block of code there to move our robot in reverse. We have to use another one. And it's this one over here that looks quite similar. Okay, we can tell the robot to move forward, we can tell him to move back, or we can tell him to move left and left or right. So we're gonna go with the down arrow here. That's telling our robot to move in reverse or backwards. Okay, and we're just going to get him to move for 50 centimeters. So that way he's going to drive back to where he came from. 
Okay, so if we go through this code step by step one more time, we've set our movement motors up so the computer knows which um, ports we need to power up to move. We've set our movement speed to 50%, so he's not moving too quick. We're going to go straight for 50 centimeters. And then the final block of code here tells him to move back for 50 centimeters. So he drives forward and then he goes back to where he started. He doesn't turn around, he just drives straight in reverse. So if we go and press play and test that out, we can have a look at our, what our robot does. All right, so there we have it. That's all I'm going to show you in this video for now. There are, I suppose, different ways, as you can see here with the moving blocks, that you can move forward and back. But this is probably the simplest option um, that I'm going to show you right here today. So if you want to play with some other blocks, by all means, go for it. But this is probably the easiest way to move your robot forward and back. In the next video, I'm going to show you how you can be um, turning your robot left and right. So I'll see you in that video.